What's good guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll be breaking down how to create this background spinning rotoscope effect. We're going to be animating the rotation as well as the position in order to create this spinning background effect as it slides out and transitions into the next clip. So here in After Effects, I'll be creating a transition from this first clip into the second clip. And to get started, we're going to rotoscope our subject. So double click the layer and then grab your rotobrush tool and rotoscope your subject. After rotoscoping your subject, you want to then click the freeze button. Let's go back into the composition. And now, as you guys can see, we have our rotoscope subject. I'll be adjusting the feather as well as the shift edge. Increase the feather to around 11 and then decrease the shift edge to around negative 54. So now we have smoother edges for our subject. We're going to then grab that layer, click Control D in order to duplicate it. And then for the bottom layer, I'll just rename both of these layers just to make it easier for me to identify. So that one, I'll name that as Dave. And then for the bottom one, I'll just name that to Dave BG, which stands for background. We're going to then delete the rotobrush effect for that background layer. Now, in order to actually get started with this animation, we're going to add a motion tile effect to this background layer, increase the output width to 500 and then the output height to 500 click mirror edges and then in order to actually create that spinning slide effect for our background layer we're going to add a transform we're going to use this effect in order to create that animation so we'll be keyframing the position as well as the rotation at the start we're going to then go forward 20 frames so hold the shift button on your keyboard and click page down twice then i'm going to create a rotation keyframe to 180 degrees and for the position i want it to slide to the right so i'm going to keyframe it in a way where it slides to the right just like that and then we're also going to keyframe the y value in a way where it slides down so I'll keyframe the position in a way where the background matches with our subject. As you guys can see, we want to align the background with our rotoscope subject. So I'll have it like that. So now when I play this, we have that rotation sliding effect. And as you guys can see, it just doesn't look good. So what I'm going to do is just move this forward two more frames. And then we're going to turn on the motion blur. Easy ease these keyframes. Now when I play this, it feels a lot smoother. And the motion blur definitely makes it look a lot better. What we're going to do now is go forward 16 frames. And then we're going to keyframe the position in a way where it slides towards the left and because we want the background to align with our rotoscope subject what i'm just going to do is just keyframe this at negative 960 because that's the original x position so now when i play this we have that sliding effect after the background spins we're going to then go into the graph editor of these position keyframes and then i'm going to have the influence at 50 percent so that it slides a little faster in the beginning I have the influence at 50 percent for both of these I'm also going to go to the graph editor of the rotation keyframes and then do the same thing where the influence is at around 50%. Now we have more of a smoother animation. We're going to then add an optics compensation to this layer. For this optics compensation, I'll keyframe the field of view at zero at the start and then click that layer, click U to reveal the keyframes. I'll go forward about 12 frames or go forward 11 frames just so that it's right at the middle of these position and rotation keyframes. And then I'll keyframe the field of view to 120 and make sure to click reverse lens distortion so that it covers the entire composition. And then go forward another 11 frames, keyframe the field of view back to zero, grab all three of those keyframes, ease ease them, go into the graph editor, create a similar graph where the influence is at 50%. So now when I play this, we have that distorted effect going on in the background. We're going to then create a slide out transition for our background. From this keyframe, we're going to go forward 20 frames and and then we're going to keyframe the position in a way where it slides out completely out of the composition. So it slides from left to right. I have mine like this where it slides from the left to the right. Now when I play this, as you guys can see, that sliding out transition creates a transparent background, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do is grab our top layer, which is the next clip, and we're just going to drag that down to the bottom and just drag this layer back to where this keyframe starts. So that's about 37 frames back. Now when we play this, we don't have that transparent background anymore because it just transitions into the next clip. I'm also just going to cut this timeline to where the second clip ends. We're going to then create that transition where our top layer, which is our rotoscope subject, slides out. So in order to do that, we're going to go back two frames from this keyframe right here because we want to create a transition where the keyframes are overlapping just so that it creates more of a smoother animation. So go back two frames and then we're going to cut this layer, keyframe the position at the start, go forward 10 frames, and then we're just going to animate it in a way where 
where it slides to the right. Grab both of those keyframes, easy ease them, turn on the motion blur, go into the graph editor of those keyframes, going to create a similar graph as the other ones where the influence is at 50%. So now when I play this, we have that really smooth animation of our rotoscope subject. And just to make this effect look a little better, I'm going to add a fast box blur to this bottom layer, keyframe the blur radius at six, and then go forward 10 frames. So that right when our rotoscope subject animates out, we then have a fully focused background layer. Grab both those keyframes, easy ease them. Now when I play this, this is what we have for our final animation. It's a good way to just add some energy to your edits. But that is all I have for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.